While I was in the Marine Corps, we would be stalked by these Bigfoot creatures at Camp Leun, North Carolina. It did not matter how many of us were out there. We were armed with rifles and no ammo and or blanks during field ops. They would pick up whatever trash or snacks we would drop. We sometimes could see their eyes in the tree line and see random glimmers of shadows through our night optics. But you can see outlines and or someone's figure. I mean like stuff that was used probably during the early 2000s, and they were monocular. We would hear knocks or rustling throughout our nights around Verona Loop training grounds or on Camp Leun. Many of us who spent time in the infantry spend about 45 to 60% of the year in the woods. You could hear them at night. One night I was doing patrol ops in the woods slash hills and we decided to take a pause. It was around 3 a.m. and we were taking a nap break. It was during a war game, and I was on watch with one of my buddies. Holding security, we saw an outline in the woods, and meanwhile, we were sleep deprived, not thinking we were seeing real things in the tree line, till we talked to each other to confirm what we were seeing through our nods. Pebbles were being thrown at us, and we were confused. Thinking we were about to be run up on by Op 4, Opposition Force, so we wake up our other guys slowly, thinking we are about to be ambushed. Turns out we were being stalked. We decided to get into defensive positions, and rocks kept coming, thinking we were being messed with by the advisors running around over watching the war game. We checked on the radio if there were any nearby. None. None at all. So we thought it was up for. We opened up with blanks. But, as we opened up, we saw a massive creature, and another one, about 25 to 30 meters away. The creatures knocked over a semi-thin tree and gave a deep growl. Something that would shake guys who were desensitized and not really scared by anything. When daylight came, we circled back to look and we found huge footprints. We were so confused and shaken. After that situation, we did not know how to explain what we saw or experienced. That night I became an actual believer. I was always skeptical about Bigfoot or some creature being in the woods. It was about five years ago. To this day, I struggle to go into the woods. Gang stalked by Bigfoot. I live out in the country, deep in the sticks in Georgia. For the past 12 years, every night there is banging on my roof, tapping on my windows, scraping noises on the walls outside. Sometimes huge crashing noises and bangs that make me just about shit myself. The whole house shakes. Sometimes I stay up all night and see these huge beasts moving toward my house through the windows. I've managed to see their faces a few times, but they run lightning fast when I turn on the porch or yard lights or shine a flashlight faster than Usain Bolt. I tried leaving the lights on at night to keep them away, but they throw rocks at the lights until they break if I do that. It's horrible because I can barely sleep, and I am too poor to move. Sex with my wife gets interrupted by all the noise. Sometimes she gets startled by the banging, and farts while we're doing it, which kills the mood. I'm worried, because it's gotten worse. I think they want to kill me. They seem like they've started following me to work. If I work late, I'll go out to my truck in the parking lot, and sometimes see one messing around with my car. The muffler was torn off once. One broke a window, and I briefly saw it with its arm reaching into the car through the broken window as I left work. The fuckers distract me at work by throwing pebbles at the windows if it's dark enough outside. They also started sending me telepathic messages about how they want me to leave, how I look tasty to them, and how they eat humans they hate. Think this explains missing 411. I've tried taking pictures but they always come out fucked up in some way because the hairy bastards avoid light and are so quick. Pick related looks like the one I saw staring through my window when I went to get a midnight snack and flip the lights on briefly. The Australian Yowie Sasquatch Bigfoot Thingy Bipedal and humanoid 3 meters, 10 feet tall with very long arms Shit tons of sightings, including eyewitness accounts I know people who've seen them. We'll get to that later. People in small parts of Victoria, Southeast Australia, hear primate-like calls every day at dusk and dawn. 
love shiny shit. Almost every eyewitness has reported one key factor. The stink. You can always smell them before you see them. Front canine teeth hang out of their mouth. Distinctive overbite. Eyes glow. I know a man. Let's call him Mick. In a central town called Guri in NSW. Largely dirt and scrub forest. Population is less than 500 people who claims to have encountered them at least twice. Once in his early teens and once a few years ago. He was exploring with a few friends when he was 12 to 15 years old and they smelt it. Shortly followed by hearing its footsteps. It is very wide, flat feet, so its steps are very, very loud. He also claims to have heard trees cracking, which also fits the description, as they are often thought to snap any branches that get in the way when they run, to keep up momentum, sometimes even uprooting small trees. He turned to his friend, but he was gone, so he ran to catch up with him. As they caught up, his friend said that he had seen something, but didn't say much else. Mick told me that he must have seen something, because he was piss scared, and he had never seen anyone run that fast. His friend really never talked about it, and took his own life in his late thirties, not because he saw a yaoi. He was a drug addict. Mick's second account was when he was in his twenties. He claims to have found a makeshift campsite in dense bushland. It had a nest slash bed made from shredded tarpaulins and foliage, and shadowed glass and rocks arranged in intricate patterns on the ground. As for killing it, I don't know. Gun? Grew up in BC, mostly in Victoria, but I've got family all over. Live on the East Coast now. Definitely a lot less weird over here, even though it's got a lot older European remnants. I've experienced a lot of spirit slash ghost sensory stuff, even so on briefly. I know I did not imagine it, because my GF at the time, and a random dude walking behind us, saw it all too. Aside from the visual, the feeling accompanying it was intense. My current GF lived on Vancouver Island for a long time too. She's a lot more sensitive to the supernatural, kind of a witchy hippie type person. She told me a story about an entity spirit that resided in a cave that grabbed her and dragged her into a cave. Not really my story, but I'll do my best. Happened during the deforestation protests back 15-ish years ago. She's camped out with First Nations and hippie protesters. Guy she met there is a weird spiritual sort of dude. Seems kind of schizo to me, but she claims he can see and communicate with paranormal entities. Do camps out at this cave that goes deep into the mountain and wants others to stay away. Tells people to never bring weapons near there, under any circumstances. Not safe for them. What the fuck? GF goes to visit him. She always carries a knife on her in her purse, even today. Knife, securely on her belt, comes off and goes flying into the cave. She is scared shitless. Dude is going, no, no, I said no weapons. Something grabs her by the legs and hauls her off her feet, starts dragging her towards the cave. She can't see anything, but whatever it is, it's far stronger than a human. Buddy starts talking to the entity, assuring it that she's a friend and meant no harm. He vouches for her. Thing lets go after dragging her six feet. She apologizes to the entity and dude, then skadoodles. Wakes up the next day with her knife next to her in her tent. Asked dude, and he claimed he never goes into the cave and did not retrieve it for her. It's not really my favorite, but I like it because it's local to me. Can't remember all of the details, word for word, neither. Sometime in the 1940s, young boys hanging out with some friends. They and others see objects flying around the sky. This is during World War II, so they're used to seeing things flying in the sky. But they haven't seen ones like this before. They're kids, so they don't really pay much attention and just do their own thing. A few days later, they're playing in a lane and one of the crafts either lands or just appears. A's get out, but they aren't all one species. Describes one as a grey, one as like a Bigfoot, and then other assorted ones. There's around five of them in total. Friends shit their britches and run off. One of them grabs him, and I'm pretty sure sticks a needle in the back of his neck. Not sure what happens after that, but later that night, slash a couple days later, he's looking out his bedroom window and sees a little A, maybe a grey I'm not sure, loitering around the back gate that leads to the lane. 
his uncle fucks it over the head with a shovel and kills it. The uncle and a cop put it inside of a coal sack and bury it at the stairs of the church. A week or so later, men in black turn up to the house and give vague threats to him and his family. Doesn't tell the story until the 50s or 60s. Which, as far as I know, predates the multiple species age sharing aircraft meme. I actually have a green text related to the church that I'm going to post after this because I'm mental and no one can stop me. I didn't find out about the A thing until later though, which is when I put two and two together to make what I like the sound of. 16 years old, live in British Columbia, Canada. Me and a close friend of mine decide to go camping for four days during spring break. Meet at my place in the early hours of the morning with all our equipment. Friend is just about 18 and also has his end driver's license. He brings with him his dad's Lee Enfield 308 rifle. I ask my mother if I can take my Israeli Mauser in point 308. Begrudgingly, she says yes, as the bears are starting to wake up and may want a food source. Take all the needed gear, such as a tent, and a few of her goodies like MREs, water filters, ammo, etc. Throw our gear into the back of my older friend's truck and set off. The smooth one hour drive out of town takes us to some very forests which continue right up to the Rockies, if I remember right. Park his car and load our rucksacks and grab our guns. Both of us are carrying stripper clips and a lot of ammunition as we also intend to do some target shooting. Hike for a good 7 kilometers before we notice the first weird thing. A large tree, maybe 15 years old, has been broken at the base. What's weird is that it must have been some really big thing, as the base of the tree is the strongest part. No beavers, as the nearest lake is 5 kilometers ahead of us, our camping spot. Not a boulder falling down, as that area of the forest is flat. What the fuck? Shrug it off as a friend teases that it could be Bigfoot. Whatever. Walk another kilometer and have lunch which consisted of MREs. By around 5pm in the afternoon, we reach our campground. The lake which was decent in size, however you could see all around it. Old ass abandoned cabin on the other side. The cabin looks 1900s kind of old. Set up our tent as well as a small shooting range to peg shit with bullets and make our skills razor sharp. Attempt to go swimming, however the water is so fucking cold, as all the snow had melted recently. Decide to walk around the cabin, straight across from us, on the other side of the lake. On the way over, see some big ass fucking footsteps in the mud. That's no bear. We both get a little freaked out by this, and consider moving our tent. We decide not to, after shrugging it off, and remembering we both had high powered rifles. Keep in mind, his Enfield has 10 308 rounds in a Mac, and my Mauser has 5 of them. We can stop anything dead in its tracks in pretty much one hit. Cabin's door is long since gone. Dust on floor. Another footprint in dust. Fuck this. We leave the cabin immediately, and walk back to camp. Inspect camp to make sure nothing has been fucked around with. We are both paranoid now. Decide to do some target shooting around 7pm to maybe ward anything off that is curious. Unload between us a good 25 bullets. Rip to the cans downrange. Come around 8pm and we are getting ready for bed as the sun has just slipped below the horizon. We both go to sleep, feeling a little better after expelling some rounds from our rifles. Around 11pm, I wake up to a normal night. Normal ass forest sounds around me. None of that cliche silent forest bullshit. Everything seems normal. Get out and shine a flashlight around and send a raccoon diving for cover. While scanning over the lake I see something. Come back to it and see that I am looking at two sets of eyes who are looking right back at me. The eyes reflect from the light. I can't see a torso. Immediately wake up my friend. Yell across the lake and say hello. Eyes keep staring friend emerges, carrying his weapon and ammo. We start making loud noises to try and ward this thing off. It won't fucking leave. Prop flashlight on rock to face the set of eyes. We both take aim for just below the eyes for a body shot. Boom, boom. Both our rifles explode into life and we hear a distinct whap noise as they strike home. 
the noise that followed still haunts me. It was like a roar. We both immediately make follow-up shots. We hear one of our bullets hit a tree, but the other makes the same flap noise before. Three rounds hit whatever this thing is. Did we just kill Bigfoot? No more noise is heard until 2am. A large snapping noise is heard about 400 meters away behind the cabin. We both fire off two more shots into the woods. Nothing else is heard for the rest of the evening. As soon as the sun rises at 6.40am, we pack our shit up. We go across the lake before leaving and inspect the area. Whatever was looking at us was inside the cabin. Go inside, weapons raised. Huge pool of blood, right below the front window. It's dried, so we assume it's no use. Large hole in the wall behind the window. That was the one round that missed. We don't go back to see if another tree has fallen. On the hike back, we see a rather large boulder, lying less than five feet from us. We hip-fired in its direction. We aren't disturbed again, and make it back to the truck okay. There is a large dent in the right door of the car. Also evidence of something, making a very large attempt at entering the vehicle. Drive home and tell mom. I have no idea what that thing was, but whatever it was, got some lead in it. I refuse to go back to those woods, and refuse to go camping in BC alone. Be ten years old. Go fishing with my brothers. Don't catch anything. Walking back to the car, disappointed. See furry thing on the river, its hind legs in the distance. Assume it's a bear. It crouches down, and seems to cup the water in its hands. Looks at us. Shits pants. Run like hell, warn brothers. Go back to the site. Thing is gone. Spooky story from the Cascade Mountains. Be me and free friends go to Hidden Lake. Google it. End up not sleeping at the lookout. Coming down as sunsets. Beautiful mountains. Wonderful bay. Dark. We only have headlamps and phone flashlights. Oppressive feeling. Nothing malicious. Dark woods in a mountain spooky. Driving down the five mile, very shitty forest road. Still air, no wind. Ferns along the road are spinning. Imagine if they had a string tied to the end of them and were being yanked so fast that they kind of spin. Spinning around fast. Some areas are all spinning. Some only a few spin. Some none. We are tired as balls and cracking jokes about it. And oh, my fairies. Oh, the gnomes. Oh, the skinwalkers and bigfoots. Halfway down. Ferns are spinning like mad in the headlights of the car. Going about five miles per hour because car not lifted. A fucking sapling falls from the woods and breaks over the car. We stop and get out and take it off the car. Fern spinning still. Feel spooked. No malice. Just this strange air of wonder and a feeling to keep moving. Don't touch the ferns. We all look at each other and decide to just leave. Drive down. Ferns stop spinning about three quarters of a mile from the exit to the scenic highway that leads back to the main road. Stop and get snacks in town. Beautiful little valley town by the river. Very nice store. Totally Bigfoot magic though. Also, if you believe in the Bigfoot structures, I've seen them in the woods here. 8 to 15 foot trees uprooted, jammed into the earth upside down, in rough teepee shapes, always jaggedly broken, sometimes uprooted for the smaller ones. If you ever see an uprooted and impaled tree or teepee structure, yeah, guess who made that? I'm a little bit Cherokee on both sides of the family. My great aunt on my mother's side was in the WNBA and managed to make a decent amount of money. On top to that, she got a bunch of free shit for being Cherokee. She had a rather large house in the middle of nowhere next to my great grandmother's in Colgate, Oklahoma on Indian land. Much, much further south so this place had woods and rivers. My great-aunt, first off, was completely insane, and my great-grandmother was pushing 100, so take from that what you will. We visited every Easter. I could not have been much older than 10, and didn't really listen to the adults, but I was told several times that I was not to let the dogs out, or go outside without an adult this year, because something big was around in the woods. 
My mother would later tell me that both of them had been hearing this strange howling out in the fields and found odd footprints in the mud next to the house, and my aunt had insisted that things kept hitting the window. My great-grandmother had the same experience and had actually been staying in my aunt's house for the past few days. So I hear the howling, no big deal. First few nights, that is all it was. One night I was on the patio, huge empty room surrounded by windows facing the fields. Hear howling really close, so I turn on porch light to see if I can see any eyes or anything. Dogs start going batshit and running in circles barking. Mud hits the window right in front of me. Scared me so bad I couldn't scream. Don't remember the rest, but my mother told me I cried for like an hour because I thought it was a monster. Just a few years back, I heard about the Boggy Creek monster for the first time. It's kind of like a Bigfoot. My aunt's property backs right up to Boggy Creek. Let me preface this by saying I am not a believer in Bigfoot. I don't go squatching, nor do I really think there's a giant ape living in the North Woods. The story is from my father, a nice man, who's a bit country for his own good, but is brighter than the average person will give him credit. Definitely the skeptical kind of guy. That's what makes this story even more strange. When he was around 30, I would have been, I think, free. He was driving in the backwoods, back to our first house, in the middle of nowhere. It was twilight, just enough light to still see deep in the woods on either side of the road. As he was driving, something caught his eye, and much to his surprise, he saw someone running through the woods. He slowed down. After all, no one else was on the road to get a better look at whoever it was, but they ran so fast, he couldn't really catch what was going on. While he was still a little weirded out by this, no one lived in that area, and while it could have been a hunter, why on earth would they be running so fast? He just kept driving. It got dark fast, and only a few minutes from our crappy little house, he saw something jump in front of his truck. My dad said he assumed it was a deer, but after he reached a full stop, he swears up and down what he saw peeking at him from across the road was Bigfoot. He did not get a great look at him, but he said it was massive. He was so scared he locked the doors and sped away as fast as he could. I actually never heard the story until I was a sophomore in high school. At dinner one day, I mentioned how I had gotten into an argument with another student, because the other student believed in Nessie and Bigfoot, and I was laughing about how silly that was. I was surprised when my dad got quiet and didn't give much more than a grunt. When I asked about it later that night, he told me about it. He said he didn't believe in much, but now he does believe in Bigfoot. I think that's why he ended up moving from that old house. I haven't told this story on here in a good few years, and even prior to that, I've only told it to a very few people I know personally. It's only one of the truly strange encounters I've ever had, and I still get majorly creeped out thinking about it. Around 2013, myself and two buddies went camping in Scrubland in rural Victoria, Australia. The particular area we were camping on was owned by family by one of my mates, and a few of his family came with us as well. His family stayed in a small, unpowered cabin in the dead center of his property while we roughed it in a medium-sized tent about 300 meters away from the cabin in the scrub in a small clearing. We wanted to keep our distance from the others for our trip, hence why we decided to pitch our tent that far away. We set up our tent not long after we arrived and decided to explore a bit before dark. For context, the property sits against state-owned bushland and blue gum plantations with many creeks and washes snaking through the area. We walk for a little while to a dirt road that leads up past the property to a creek with a small cement bridge crossing it. We decide to clamber down the side of the creek bed to the water, which was only just flowing, and follow it upstream. We follow it for a while, trying to avoid accidentally stepping on a tiger snake or getting covered in leeches. In the mud, not far from the water of the creek, we find the partially buried remains of an animal. Looking back, likely a kangaroo based on the size of the bones. Creepy, but the three of us think nothing of it in that moment. Why it was up the creek this far, and partially buried, I have no idea. The area is not subject to flooding, and I doubt a local would go to the effort of moving roadkill this far. Anyway, we continue up the creek, and find another pile of bones and rotting meat, 
staking out the side of the creek bed, covered in branches. This time, we find it odd. The stench was strong and foul, so we decided to turn back. The creek was getting a little hard to follow, with the brush getting thicker. We walked back the way we came, passing the first lot of bones we saw earlier, and then clambered back up the creek bed to the small bridge. We didn't notice it before, but the stench from the rotting animal upstream seemed to follow us all the way back to the bridge. It was so foul, it made your eyes water, a very sharp, sickly smell. We decided to head back and meet up with my mate's family before we head over to our tent for the night. A few hours passed by, and now it's about 8pm, still just light out, and we have set up a small fire by the tent. We cook up some bacon and eggs, typical Aussie camping food. By the time we're done eating, it's pitch dark outside, and we decide to try and catch some sleep as we plan to do a big kayaking trip in a river nearby. We all get in our own sleeping bags, but the tent isn't all that large, so we are pretty much shoulder to shoulder, but none of us really minded at the time. It was a little uncomfortable on foam sleeping mats there, and none of us got very restful sleep. I don't remember falling asleep, but in the middle of the night, I was awoken by footsteps. Odd, I thought as the family who was staying in the cabin, some 300 meters away were out of the way, were very young. Why would they walk all the way out here to our tent in the dead of night, and I didn't see any torchlight? I checked my watch, around midnight. The footsteps were faint, but the night was rather still, and I could hear them crunching around in the dark, slowly moving past our tent. I had trouble sleeping, and so laid there, awake, listening. As I'm drifting back to sleep, I'm jolted awake by a deep, guttural growling. It absolutely scared the shit out of me. I felt completely paralyzed in fear. The growling got louder, then turned to more like a series of deep, low barks, almost like deep laughter. I jostle my friends next to me awake, but say nothing. The two of them bolt upright in their sleeping bags, only barely visible by the moonlight coming through the tent walls. The sun stops. Footsteps start again, coming closer to our tent. They were heavy, and had some delay between each step, as though whoever or whatever it was, was moving slowly, carefully, choosing each step. For added context, the only animals I know that are found in the area are possums, koalas, and kangaroos. Probably foxes, and rabbits too. For those unfamiliar with kangaroos, when they hop at a full sprint pace, it can sound like a human running. The sound was not like that. It was heavy, and almost methodical. The step stopped. I'm not sure how far away from the tent, and whatever it was, started growling again. It was deep, guttural, and raspy, and slowly began changing pitch before it finished with a loud, echoing hoot or holler. We were all silent, sitting up in our sleeping bags, facing the way the sound came. We didn't hear any more footsteps, but the brush was rustling softly where the call came from. The forest was silent for a while, and we started to whisper to each other. Lots of cussing and what the fuck was that was said, as quietly as we could. One of my friends, bless his heart, was so taken by the sound, he just had this wide-eyed, pale look on his face, and he never said a word. Out of nowhere, while we whispered quietly, we heard another deep sound that ended with another loud and echoing hoot or bark in the distance, far out into the scrub, as if an answer back to whatever was sitting out near our tent. We fell silent. The footsteps near us started again, and they began to pace around our tent. Slowly, whatever it was made a full circle around us, deeply growling and gurgling to itself. It's hard to explain these sounds in words, but it was unlike anything I've ever heard before or since. Nothing like the usual koalas or possum chatter. The footsteps would continue, then stop, before it called out again only for a response to call back from what we assumed to be a few hundred meters deeper into the forest. Occasionally, in the distance, where the other thing was calling from, we would hear a large crash or bang, like a rock or branch being hurled against the foot of the tree or the ground. It would echo and fade, like the hooting and barking. Eventually, after what felt like an eternity, the footsteps grew further and further away until we couldn't hear them anymore. I checked my watch, and it's only just past 1 a.m., it felt like we were sitting listening to us be surrounded for hours and hours. We still heard a call or two in the distance, but it eventually faded away, and the forest was silent again. 
All three of us were obviously pretty shaken, and we slept very little, if at all, the rest of the morning. Eventually night came, and we got out of the tent, tentatively, had our morning pass, and packed the tent down as quickly as we could. We were mostly silent, not really in the mood yet to discuss it. We had a quick look around the area, which we heard the footsteps and strange sounds, but found no evidence of tracks, not to our knowledge at least, as the ground was well covered in fallen leaves and bark. We walked our stuff back to the cabin, and hung around for a while until my mate's family got up. We made coffee, not that we really needed it. We were still wide awake from the events earlier in the night, and spoke quietly about what happened. We were sure it wasn't a kangaroo or koala, as we had all heard the sounds they made on other trips outdoors. It was like nothing any of us had heard before. I even struggle to this day to find, like, recordings online, even when searching for more paranormal answers. When the other woke up and came out of the cabin, we coyly asked if they had heard any noises during the night. They didn't, of course. Not much happened after this. We got packed and headed out, did our kayaking trip, on very little sleep, might I add. I'll admit, the three of us did keep looking over our shoulder into the bush beside the river as we went up river, pretty paranoid from the night before. My two friends have since showed little interest in discussing the events of that night since then, and often shut down the conversation about what may have made the sounds. To this day, I still don't have an answer. I don't like to jump to the cryptid answer, but I'll admit, it has crossed my mind many times. Bigfoot, Yahweh, whatever, I'm not sure. It's a big jump to put a name to something that we never saw. Has anyone else had a similar experience in Australia?